what we call the fireside chat, which normally invo involves a, fi a fire and two chairs. We don't have either of those things. So we're going to stand. We're going to try to keep it cyber talk like and, uh, and punchy. So uh, we're going to talk about moving to the cloud securely and how you might do that. I have two guest speakers. Uh, you'll hear from, uh, from them sequentially. Uh, and my first guest speaker, and, and someone I'm really glad has joined us uh, for today, uh, is a corporate vice president uh, of uh, Azure Networking at Microsoft. Please welcome to the stage, Yusuf Khalidi. Yusuf. It's, it's, it's nice to see you, Yusuf. I learned that you've been at Microsoft for 14 years. And uh, you were previously at Sun Micro. You were CTO of Solaris, I understand. Right, yeah. yeah, so you, you've got a good credibility in this space. I've been doing YouTube for 10 years. OK, great. Can we hear you? you we can't hear you. OK, our, I'm sure the gods of AV will fix that anytime soon. Uh, otherwise, you'll get my uh, microphone. How's that? No? Oh, well. Yes? No. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's definitely on. It's definitely on. So we'll give them a second. Say something. No, not yet. All right. Well, I'm sure they're thinking about it. Um, <laughs> otherwise, we'll both lean into my microphone. <laughs> Here we go. All right. That wasn't my second guess. That was merely the sound guy. All right. So, um, Microsoft. You know, you guys have a lot of enterprise credentials, you're in almost every data center. Does that play well into the cloud? Uh, very much so, to be honest. Uh, as you probably know, we are in every data center. Our roots are in the enterprise. And uh, in that space, security, of course, is paramount. You can't make a sale in a data center without first making sure that the network is set up securely and all the security boundaries are in place, of course. And, you know, without that, frankly, nobody uses the cloud, to be honest. So you, so you think people do look at Microsoft and say, um, well, you're in my enterprise, you're the natural choice for cloud? That comes in, in many ways, yes, to be honest. So uh, as you probably know, we invest a lot in security of our infrastructure, the data centers, and so forth. We invest a lot in the security of the software. But we also have a very large compliance certification portfolio. Actually, of all the public cloud providers, we have the biggest portfolio of certifications for compliance. We also have the biggest footprint in terms of 38 regions around the globe and growing, which means uh, regardless where the customer might be, we can meet their needs both from compliance perspective and the location perspective as well. Fabulous. And um, when people talk to you about Azure uh, and using Microsoft Cloud Services, what are their major security concerns? Are, do they, does that come up as a concern? Of course, and, and of course. What do, you, what do you say to them in terms of offering? It's probably a no surprise for anybody in this room, but the corporate WAN is gone. There's no longer a WAN with a firewall on premises, and that's it. Your customers, your employees are everywhere. Your software, your services are everywhere. We're using Office 365, maybe using Salesforce, using Azure, AWS, whatever the case may be, and as such, it's no longer as simple as the old days with a simple DMZ, I'm done. Now it's everywhere. So you need security boundaries, you need controls, uh, everywhere to be honest. On premises and in the cloud, and different places as well. So, so what's Microsoft's strategy then in going into the cloud and, and helping their, their customers in the enterprise kind of make that transition? Uh, very simply, we believe strongly in the hybrid model. Uh, as you probably, many of you are, you have investments on premises already. You have your data centers, uh, and you are growing into also public cloud providers. We believe in a seamless experience from on-prem all the way to the public cloud. And as I mentioned earlier, we also believe in meeting you where you are. So if you want to be on-prem, it's fine with us. If you want to be in the public cloud, totally fine with us. If you want to be in a certain region of the world, we are probably going to be there. And if you need third-party solutions, you want partners like Checkpoint, for example, they're there as well. And uh, you may not guys know this, but uh, also one third or more of VMs running on Azure are actually Linux VMs. So if you want to use open source, go for it. If you want to use Microsoft software, also go for it. 
So um, obviously you're here because the, there is a relationship with Checkpoint. I, is it important? I mean, do you see the security offering as a key component? Very much so. As I mentioned, we really want to meet you where you are. So our partner ecosystem is very important to us, and Checkpoint by name is also very important to us because you have a business to run, and you have standardized on technology such as Checkpoint. And I know that you won't be able to use my platform unless you have the security technologies that you want yourself. Therefore, of course, it's very important. So, so if someone wants to get started, uh, 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 someone is a major Microsoft customer, likes the idea of Azure, um, also thinks security is important, so wants to work with Checkpoint, uh, how would they get started? Uh, ease of use, ease of startup in the cloud is very important. So we have been working together. Uh, if, if you go to the Azure marketplace today, you're gonna find the Azure software, sorry, the Checkpoint software already in the marketplace. It's tested, it's certified. Uh, your company probably already has a relationship with Microsoft. Go create an account, fire up the Checkpoint software, create a virtual network, do all the stuff you want to do from your laptop. You can do it now if you want to, guys. And then see how easy it is to configure and to use these systems. And, and so customers who want to do that, should they come to Microsoft, should they come to Checkpoint together, the partners? Were, were uh, we have go-to-market um, documentation, agreements with our respective sales forces. But frankly, guys, for the technologists in the room, just go do it yourself. Go to the website. Just do it. All right. A any last points from Microsoft? Uh, it is the cloud is really growing. You don't have to tell, have to tell you this. It's really growing. I, myself, Azure from day one. It used to be back in 2006, half a dozen folks built the platform. It took years for people to realize what the cloud is. Now it's no longer a question of what it, the cloud is. It's only a question of how to do it. So you're going to see us investing quite a bit with partners like Checkpoint to make it easy for you to use the cloud and to secure the cloud. Great. Well, Yusuf, thank you for coming. Thank uh, you. I know you've got a flight to catch, but we may see you around during the beginning of the definitely, launch if anyone has definitely, questions. Definitely. Perfect. Yusuf, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Okay, well, um, Microsoft, one of the, the big players in cloud. Let's hear from another real big player in cloud. Um, uh, Barry is the global um, business development lead and general manager for AWS Marketplace and uh, Catalog Services uh, and Amazon Web Services. So please welcome Barry Russell. Barry. Good to see you, Barry. You too. Thanks for having me. I have to say, you look very Amazon. Well, you know, <laughs> what can I say? But it's a hell of a haircut, I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, all right. It's an expensive haircut, too, with razor. <laughs> um, DIY, always, uh, always a good thing. All yeah. right. So. AWS Marketplace. Tell, tell us about AWS Marketplace and, uh, and what that means from the point of view of the cloud. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's important to talk about uh, what's happening with AWS as well. Um, if we take a step back, you know, in December of last year at our reInvent show, we announced that, you know, we're on a $14 billion run rate, growing at 47% year over year. Um, and a lot of what's fueling that growth is the work that we are doing with partners and our partner ecosystem and customer migrations to cloud. One of the things that we heard well back in uh, 2010 and 2011 when we talked to customers was that they could move with agility and speed when they wanted to migrate data workloads or infrastructure. They could move very quickly with the services that AWS provided and move those into cloud with a matter, within a matter of a few minutes. But the thing that was holding them back was the ability to move at that same pace with third-party software that they wanted to procure, or they had BYOL licenses that they wanted to apply against architecture that had been established for AWS. And so we thought, what is a way that we can create um, a better mechanism and simplify the procurement, the discovery, the deployment, and the management of software? And so we launched the AWS Marketplace uh, five years ago. In fact, uh, yesterday was our, our fifth birthday, so we have a celebratory birthday. You won't sing if you don't mind. Yeah, 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 no, no singing, please. <laughs> Um, and uh, what that's allowed customers uh, and partners that serve those customers to do uh, is today find um, over 3,800 uh, application listings from more than 1,200 ISVs that are pre-architected to run on top of AWS and deployable in a matter of minutes. Hmm. So you, you mentioned you've been with Amazon about five years. Five years, yeah. And you've got a long tenure in IT vendors, big ones, startups. Yep. Um, 
So how are you seeing software deployment models changing now? Yeah, you know, uh, what's changing is not only deployment, but procurement. Um, and really, you know, over the last 12 months, we spent time interviewing hundreds of customers, enterprise customers and government organizations, as well as SMB and startup, on what's changing for them with their software portfolio. Um, and what's changing is not only the architecture of the software and how that needs to be um, deployed and set up and managed on top of a uh, cloud like AWS, but also the procurement. And when they think about procurement, they no want to longer want to be locked into these long-term, five-year, um, non-elastic contracts. They want pricing mechanisms and software that can scale with the workload that they have running on top of AWS. So for us, the big shift that we see um, is not only in the deployment of software uh, coming onto AWS, but also the procurement. And I would add a third. Um, and the third trend that we're starting to see uh, very rapidly amongst the enterprise is the movement to SaaS, mm -hmm. where they think about um, procuring a solution uh, out of an a, a catalog like AWS Marketplace, where that software is running inside of the vendor's account, your account running on AWS. And the reason for that is that once again, it removes all the friction around the management and deployment, um, the type of compute resources that need to be applied to that software, and simply allows that company to subscribe and use the product. So um, a lot of the way I think the enterprise is typically going to look at, at AWS is infrastructure as a service. You know, sure. deploy the deploy the, the servers uh, in the cloud and then and then upload onto them. Um, I know Amazon talks about this kind of shared responsibility model um, and shared security model. Um, what does that mean, really? I mean, how should people think about it in terms of? How much security, if you're deploying into an infrastructure as a service model, do you have to deploy versus sure. what can you expect? Yeah, you know, I mean, in 2015 at reInvent, the CIO of Capital One said that, you know, they, they, by far they could do security, uh, you know, uh, running their uh, application workloads on AWS far better than they could on-prem uh, in their own data centers. And when we think about a shared security model, what we're saying is that AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud, of the platform and the services that we have running uh, in our cloud. Um, what we ask customers and partners to do is, is be responsible for some of the applications, content, and workloads that they have running in the cloud. Um, and that's the differentiator we make. And it's one of the reasons, quite frankly, that we built something like the marketplace and we have such a wide partner ecosystem is that we want customers to be able to use third-party software applications from providers like Checkpoint that they're familiar with using on-prem we want to be able to, to allow them to transfer those over to the workloads they have running on AWS and set up a security posture that they're familiar with. Mm, so you can buy Checkpoint on AWS? Absolutely. On the marketplace. You can buy Checkpoint uh, uh, on AWS. Customers can buy it directly from you. They can leverage BYOL licenses, help migrate those to the cloud. Um, and for net new customers or customers that want additional software from Checkpoint, they can purchase that product out of the AWS marketplace and have that all attached to the contract uh, billing uh, that they have with AWS. Uh, we bill the customer on behalf of the software provider. We make it seamless for the customer to run multiple software applications from a provider like Checkpoint, uh, receive a monthly bill, um, and not have to manage multiple contracts. So that's a good point. It, it does lead me to a bit to kind of an elephant in the room question, if you don't mind me throwing this at you, okay. which is, it, given everything you just said, a lot, of, a lot of the people in this room, I think, like to work with a local partner. That's the way we, they've deployed a lot of things. Uh, they certainly buy Checkpoint through a partner. Um, what's the role of the partner in, in this context? Uh, the, the role is crucial. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you a couple of thoughts and a, a couple of examples that are real. You know, when we first started uh, AWS, shortly after um, we, we kicked off in 2006, we established um, what we call the Amazon Partner Network, or the APN, with the sole purpose of creating an ecosystem of consulting partners, SIs, VARs, managed service providers that could be trained on different AWS services and help customers on their migration journey to the cloud. Given our run rate that I talked about earlier, the opportunity is massive. It's absolutely massive. It's quite frankly, I think, you know, I've been in this for 25 years. It's bigger than it's ever been for partners to serve the needs of customers, both for third-party software and for AWS services, both to help them migrate, deploy, 
architect and in many cases manage the workloads that they have running that they have to migrate over from the data center. So, I, I mean, in short, uh, I would encourage anybody who isn't participating uh, in cloud today to take advantage of the training programs that are available um, and help train a few of your staff so that you can be there for your customers when they ask you for that help. And so, it, again, so a, a customer, uh, a, an enterprise looking to use the cloud, looking to use AWS in your case, doesn't have to go to you and deal with everything Absolutely else. They, not. they can use the partnerships they've got in place. Yeah, we, we in fact, we value the partnerships um, that uh, the channel partners already have established with the customers. And frankly, we rely on the expertise of channel partners and the breadth of people that channel partners represent around the world to help customers migrate. It is not something we can do on our own. Okay, okay. Well, Barry, any last points you want to make to the group before uh, we're done? No, I just wanted to say uh, thank you. It's a privilege to be up here, and thanks for the check. We appreciate the partnership with Amazon. All right. Barry, thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Thank you.